Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. I have two cars with a catalytic converter code, P0420. I'm gonna show you the easiest way I know to diagnose a catalytic converter. The only tool you'll need is a scan tool that can read live data. There's lots of great scan tools on the market. Make sure you choose one that can read live data. If it can only read codes and nothing else, I recommend going with a different option. Our first car here, the PT Cruiser, we'll go ahead and read fault codes just to confirm. And right there, P0420, that's the only code. Now, if we have misfire codes or any other drivability code, we wanna make sure we take care of that first. But because this is the only code, we'll back out and let's go to data stream. Now we wanna find the oxygen sensors. So here's oxygen sensor number one, and then we need oxygen sensor number two. Okay, the car's not started yet. We'll go ahead and start the car and get it warmed up. We're not quite up to operating temperature, so we'll give it some throttle until our temperature is in range. All right, it's been a few minutes. Our temperature is looking good. Let's go back to our scan tool. Again, we have our oxygen sensor selected. Now this only has one catalytic converter, so we see one downstream oxygen sensor. If your vehicle has two catalytic converters, it's possible that you'll have two downstream oxygen sensors, just depending on your vehicle's makeup. Let's go ahead, hit okay. Now you could do pretty good reading it like this, but I like to graph it. Just gives us a nice visual. So we are idling currently. The upstream oxygen sensor, this is a narrow band sensor. We should see it switch back and forth between zero and one. Just nice back and forth switching. That's what we're seeing. Now the bottom, that's our catalytic converter monitor. This is what the engine computer is looking at to determine if the catalytic converter is good or not. We wanna see a nice line straight across. This is actually pretty good, except that dip right there. We'll just let it collect a little more data. We don't want it to dip too far. So far it's looking not too crazy, but there's another dip. We want that line as even as possible. It's starting to dip a little there too. There's a bigger dip. So now that we've collected some data at idle, let's go ahead and bring the RPMs up to 2000 RPM. So we'll just bring it up to two and hold it. Somewhere right there. Now let's look at it. The catalytic converter has to work harder at higher RPMs. You can see it dropping off a lot more now than it was at idle. So that's what the engine computer is looking for. If it sees that type of graph, it's gonna flag it as a faulty catalytic converter. It wants to see a straight line. Once it starts noticing dips and too many dips, it's gonna flag it. This is what a bad catalytic converter looks like. Let off the gas. When your downstream oxygen sensor is switching back and forth, that is a faulty catalytic converter. Could a faulty oxygen sensor give you a false catalytic converter code? Yes, it can, but a faulty oxygen sensor will not look like that switching back and forth. That's a functioning oxygen sensor with a faulty converter. I'm gonna go ahead and replace this catalytic converter so you can see what a good converter looks like. So it has been a couple hours. The catalytic converter is replaced. I went ahead, warmed up the engine ahead of time. Now let's look at our scan tool. So you wanna look at those same PIDs, the upstream, downstream. Hit okay. We're gonna graph it for a nice visual. Give it some time to populate. Now the up is gonna go up and down just like that because of the narrow band oxygen sensor. Now if this was a wide band oxygen sensor, it would be a nice straight line. And whatever that voltage is for that particular vehicle, that's where it would stay. But narrow band, switching. Notice our downstream O2 sensor, catalytic converter. Man, nice and straight. That's what we wanna see. Usually in between six or 0.6 and 0.8. A lot of times just right in between there. So I think this is enough information at idle. Let's go ahead and bring it up, 2000 RPM. Now we'll look at it. Don't worry about the initial. We just wanna see a nice straight line. We'll just hold this for a little while, get some good data. That should be good enough so you can see what a new converter or a good converter should look like. Nice, relatively straight line all the way around. So let's hop into our second vehicle with a bad catalytic converter. All right, we are in our second vehicle. This time it's a Dodge. We got the engine off, but we do have a check engine light. So let's check codes, read fault code, DTCs. Now this time we have a couple different DTCs. See our P0420s down here. So you wanna carefully look at the others to make sure this will not affect how it runs. So we got engine oil pressure, that won't affect how it runs, and battery temperature, that won't affect how it runs. So that's perfectly fine. We're gonna focus on our P0420. 
So now we start the vehicle up and let it warm up. Now I went ahead of time, warmed up our engine to speed things up. Now let's look at some scan data. Read data stream. This time we're just gonna look at our downstream O2 sensor. So bank one, sensor two, that's for our P0420. Now P0430 is the same code only for bank two. So depending on how many catalytic converters you have, if it's a V6, V8, most likely you have two catalytic converters. So you have a bank one and a bank two. This vehicle only has one, so it's a bank one sensor two, P0420. Hit okay, we're gonna graph. Now this is at idle, our catalytic converter. It is going up and down just a little, but it's staying above 0.6. So below 0.8, above 0.6, kind of averaging if you look here, kind of around, oh, we got a dip there, but no, oh, there's another dip. Okay, it's starting to fail even at idle. But sometimes catalytic converters can look okay at idle, but then fail as the RPMs go up. So let's go ahead, we'll give it some throttle. I'm gonna bring it up to about two grand, in between two and 2,500. We'll come back, look at what our converter's doing. It's totally failing. It can't keep up with that added exhaust stream. So we don't even have to test drive the vehicle. Just here, sitting in park, this catalytic converter, it can't keep up. That's how easy it can be to diagnose a failed catalytic converter. This is not an oxygen center issue. This is a failed converter. Let's let off the gas. We'll kind of see it. It might correct and be kind of normal. See, it's a lot better at idle, but once we give it throttle, it starts to fail. All right, so we've seen what a good catalytic converter should look like and what a faulty catalytic converter looks like. That waveform oscillates with a bad catalytic converter. So we are sitting in a third vehicle. Wasn't expecting this one, so we got a bonus vehicle. Let's diagnose it together. Now this one's a little different because the check engine light is intermittent. Sometimes it comes on, sometimes it'll turn itself off, but it is throwing a catalytic converter code. So let's see if it is the converter. Let's look at the scan tool. Just if you're curious, we're sitting in a Toyota this time. We already got it to operating temperature. Check engine light is off at the moment. And this is a V6, so it'll have two catalytic converters. So I have bank one sensor two, bank two sensor two. Right now they're right where they should be at idle. Let's go ahead and graph this for visual. All right, we'll let this graph populate a little. We're at 0.78 volts on top, 0.74 volts on the bottom. Perfectly within range. And that's how we kind of want to see it. Nice and flat, nice and flat. Let's go ahead and give it throttle right around two grand, 2,500. We'll see what these do. And it's okay if they drop just a little, that's okay. We're really just looking for the waveform. We want it as straight as possible. This one's getting kind of more slanted down, but it's still fairly straight. We'll just keep it going. Oh, starting to dip a little, starting to oscillate a little. Oh, there we go. Now we're dipping below 0.5 volts. And you see it starting to really oscillate. So this can't keep up with the demand we're giving it. We'll give it a little longer, see what else it does. Yeah, see it just oscillating like that, dipping really low. So this catalytic converter is worn out. It's just not keeping up. And that'll throw the code. And this is bank one, so that'll be a P0420. This is bank two, that'll be a P0430 if that was bad. So that's it, bank one bad catalytic converter. All right, we have just diagnosed this as a faulty catalytic converter. And that's why the check engine comes on because it just can't keep up. But it takes a while before it drops down. And that's probably why the check engine light resets itself. So yes, this catalytic converter is bad, but it's not completely toast. So we're gonna do an experiment. I can hear some of you saying, well, what about Cataclean? Is there something we could do to revitalize this catalytic converter. And I think because the code is intermittent and because the catalytic converter can keep up for a while before it starts to drop off, we're gonna try it. I don't know if it'll work, but perfect opportunity for an experiment. So we're gonna fill the tank up with Cataclean, give it back to the customer, let them run through two tanks of gas, and then we'll come back and double check. Why didn't we do this on the other catalytic converters? Because they were too far gone. There was no way those were gonna revitalize, but this one might have a little hope. Let's see what happens. All right, we are back. It's been about three weeks. They've gone through two tanks of gas and two bottles of Cataclean. Pretty interested to see the results. Now I haven't peaked yet, but let's take a look. The check engine light is currently not on and they said it hasn't been on since. 
but this was intermittent. Just to show you, we are up to temperature. Go to our scan tool, we'll read data, go to our oxygen sensor. We're just gonna do the downstream, bank one, sensor two, bank two, sensor two. Let's see what those are looking like. All right, we'll go ahead and graph. Let it populate just for a little bit. So nice, relatively straight line, little ups and downs. This one's a little flatter, but still within range. Let's go ahead and give it some throttle. We're going about 2,000 to 2,500, somewhere in there. We just want to hold it. Don't worry about any initial blips. Oh, that's not good. Let's just see if it'll hold above 0.5. Yeah, a little weird activity here. Looks like we're losing it. Just let this populate a little more. This one's starting to drop off too. So that might be a little worse than last time. I have to review what that footage looked like. But this upper one is definitely, that's our trouble one. Looks like they're both not doing very good. Interesting. Uh, I'm a little bummed with these results. I was really hoping this Cataclean would bring these catalytic converters back to life. I'm not knocking on Cataclean. Some people swear by it. Unfortunately, with this particular vehicle, didn't work. But it was worth a shot. That's pretty much it. The easiest way I know how to test a catalytic converter is the same way your engine computer tests your catalytic converter. And that's looking at your downstream oxygen sensors. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, comment, post down below. See you on the next one.